الحمد لله نحمد سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوته من خلقه وحبيبه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في سبيل دينه حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم اجزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسول عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمتنا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي أهدي محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يقول ربنا سبحانه وتعالى قل إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين Today I am going to address my speech to our youth in the conclusion of this series regarding the raising of a great Muslim generation which we have been covering for some time, I want to address the youth with some remarks that hopefully will inspire them to get engaged and to be active and to take some responsibilities for shaping their own future and the future of their ummah. We have been, as Muslims, talking to each other especially the adult members of the community. So much so that our children feel, and rightly so, totally left out of our discussions. And that's why I spent the time I did talking about our role in raising a greater Muslim generation, greater than our own, or a great Muslim generation, because ours is not really that great. Our generation is the generation of a group of youth who came out in the 60s and the 70s or 50s even to try to learn their deen and try to apply it. But unfortunately, we also fell in the traps of minimization and the traps of taking bites of Islam and not taking the whole of Islam, except very few people here and there, who have put the effort to go back in history and study what the comprehensive understanding of Islam is. And this generation of yours, I'm talking to our youth, this generation of yours need to do the same thing. You need to learn your deen and go back to the basics, go back to the real sources, go back and sit down and learn from scholars and leaders that can give you the right view of what Islam is. Islam has been maligned by those who do not understand it or those who take it for an enemy or those who see it as a threat. But for us Muslims, we need to see Islam with our own eyes, from our own book, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to go back to the Qur'an and we need to let the Qur'an give us the hand to lead us forward. Let the Qur'an shape your ideas because then they become greater ideas. Let the Qur'an shape your future because then it will become a better future. Let the Qur'an control your behavior because then you will be regarded as an exemplary model for every other member in your circles. But do not ever 
give up your Islam to be accepted. And think about it. Whose acceptance matters most for you? People and friends or the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Whose acceptance will influence your future and your fate in the hereafter? The acceptance of somebody that you like or that he likes you or the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We know what matters. It is Allah's acceptance. So what is the condition for Allah to accept us as humans? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَانَتْ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ نُزُلًا Those who believed and did righteous deeds, certainly they have paradise as the abode of their hereafter. So once you move out of here, you see your place in paradise even while you are in your grave. What is more important? To make a certificate or to give a certificate? To make a certificate is to get something to certify you. But the testimony that is more important than any other certificate is your testimony that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Your testifying is a commitment and you cannot make this commitment come true or come to materialize or be realized unless you study what it means to say la ilaha illallah. Many of us who grew up here, their understanding of Islam is quite the opposite of what the Quran is telling us. And I am talking about those who take interest in Islam. So we have in this young generation coming up, we have people who have went to this extreme school and that extreme understanding and that extreme way of life. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that extremism is unacceptable. Even in ibadah, I want this to sink. Extremism is not acceptable even if it means more ibadah than one should have. We know the story of the three people. We said this before and most of you know it. Three people who asked about how much does the Prophet ﷺ do of ibadah? And they were told. And they said, but this is him. He has been forgiven. His past sins, his future sins, he is sinless. When he meets Allah, he is done. But for us people, we have to stand accountability. So if this is what he does, we need to do more than what he does. So one of them said, I will fast and never break the fast, which means day in and day out, day in and day out. Every day they will be fasting. The second says, I will pray all nights and never go to bed. And the third said, I'm not going to get married because if I get married, I get children, I get busy, I'm not going to worship Allah enough. I will be too busy. And the Prophet ﷺ heard about their story. And he said, call them for me. And he asked them, are you the ones who said this and this and this? They said, yes, O Prophet. What made you come to these kind of conclusions? He said, O oh, Rasulullah, you are the messenger of Allah. You have been forgiven all of your sins. And you do that much. So... What about us? We felt that we need to do more to catch up with you. And he said, أَلَا إِنِّي أَتْقَاكُمْ لِلَّهِ وَأَخْشَاكُمْ له. I am the most reverent that reveres Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. And I fear him the most. I appreciate him, I appreciate him the most. However, I pray some nights and I sleep some nights. I pray some part of a night and sleep the other part of the night. I fast and break the fast. Some days this, some days that. And I marry women, as you see. So anyone who desires a way other than mine, he is not of me. فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي 
So the Prophet ﷺ clearly is telling us that people who take the deen beyond the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, beyond its limits, beyond its guidance, they are out of the fold. So extremism is a disease. And by the way, when we talk about extremism, extremism is not something that we Muslims have while others don't. Extremism is a human trait. Every human, every one of us has certain things in which we go extreme. Some of us in some habits, some of us in some attitudes, some of us in things we like or things we hate or things we fear or things we worry about. Everyone has certain things that we go with it to an extreme length or another. Islam tells us, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا And we have made you, we have raised you to be an ummah of balance and moderation. This is not a defensive explanation of Islam because Islamophobes are accusing us of being extremes. This is Islam as it should be. I am talking about the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. I am talking about the Quran. So this has nothing to do with the politics of extremism and radicalism and all of that. That's not my teaching, that's not my preaching. But the point is, we as Muslims need to always look for the balance. Ummatan wasata means we focus on what matters most as the Prophet ﷺ teaches us to do. Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk Be keen to pursue what benefits you. That's the focus. Look after the benefits. Do not focus on what is pleasant. Do not focus on what is fun. Have fun, but don't make it your focus. Try every pleasant thing you want, but monitor the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't cross the limits of Allah. Don't follow others unless you know where they are heading. I follow you because you said I'm going to New York and that's where I want to go. I follow you. You know the way, I will follow you. But if you're not going where I want, I don't follow you. So those friends of yours who are inviting you to their own ideas, their own clubs, their own way of life, you have to ask yourself before you follow, before you give a commitment, before you make a decision, ask yourself, who benefits from it? Are you going to benefit from it? And what is the benefit? But the first question is, is it acceptable to Allah? That's what matters most. Because our ultimate purpose is to gain and earn the love and acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't earn his acceptance unless you primarily accept him and accept his guidance. This is what it means to believe. To accept Allah, to accept his guidance, then when you work according to his guidance, he promised to accept you. So you will not be left out. You will always be under the care and the watchful eyes and protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what it means to be a Muslim. This is what it means to be a better generation than the one you are following. Don't follow us. Follow the Prophet ﷺ. Don't follow your parents unless they are guiding you to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. If they ask of you to abandon the Quran or abandon the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, Allah says, Obey them not. فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Only obey them when they are in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi says, لَا طَاعَةَ لِمَخْلُوقَ فِي مَعْصِيَةِ الْخَالِقِ There is no commitment or obedience or contract 
that I am bind by if it constitutes disobedience to Allah. My commitment is only to Allah. My love is only to Allah and anyone and anything he loves. That's my commitment. That's my life. That's what it means to say that my living and my dying are all dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every nation, my brothers and sisters, and I'm talking to our young brothers and sisters primarily, every nation relies on its youth to build a better future. So trace in our generation our faults to avoid it, our achievements to be proud of it, our right steps to follow it, but do not follow anyone that takes you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what it means when we pray and ask Allah and say, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim," Guide us on the straight path. It means that we love you and we want to get to you in the shortest cut. The straight path is the shortest cut between where you are in this life and where Allah is meeting you at the end of your life. You will face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always say when somebody dies, what? Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We all belong to Allah. He is our maker. He is literally our owner. Because he is our maker. He is our provider. He is our protector. So who else should we follow if we don't follow him? He is the one that matters above all else. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون الله ورسوله أحب إليه مما سواهما. It is not enough to love Allah. Your love of Allah must be above all others, which means when He calls, He gets your answer above all else. When He invites you to do something, He gets your attention, and He grips you. by the power of your faith to do what he asks you to do. Allah invites us to paradise. We will be divided into two people. One group will accept the invitation and they believe and follow. And the other group will reject the invitation for whatever reason. And they will follow whatever path else other than the straight path. That decision is better made when you are young. Don't say, when I grow old, I will do this. Postponement is self-destruction. When you postpone anything good that you should do now, you are destroying your chances in becoming an achiever. Achievers do not put off tasks unless there is an important, more important task to do at the moment. So every generation... In every minute of their life, every day, we make decisions that either will advance real priorities that benefit us, that benefit our nation, that benefit our communities and our families, or decisions that will hurt and harm all of these institutions that are very important. The Prophet ﷺ in his remarks about his mission, almost very close to the end of his life, he looks back and he says, Nasarani shabab wa khadalani shuyukh. Youth are the ones who supported me and the elders have abandoned me. They let me down. You know that many of the elders, they became Muslims late in their life. But when it was persecution, when it was painful, when it was difficult, they sat on the side, waiting on the fence to see where things will go and where the winds will blow. But we cannot afford it as an ummah, as a nation, to wait for yet another generation other than you to make things happen, to stand for the Quran, to stand for the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, to stand for your family, for your own personal future, to stand for your community, to stand for your nation, 
our nation in which we are living is waiting anxiously as to what Islam has to offer to the West. So far, the few Muslims who are giving Islam two black eyes are the ones who are getting ahead in the news. We want to switch this. We want Islam to be seen for what it is, a religion of mercy, a religion of compassion, a religion of love, a religion of care, a religion of humans who care for all other humans, no matter what their faith or inclinations are. We are sent as mercy to the world. Let us show this mercy. Our mission is the mission of the Prophet ﷺ. Allah told him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent you but as mercy to the world. And he told us, بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً فَإِنَّهُ لَا نَبِيَّ بَعْدِي Communicate on my behalf even if it were one single ayah, one single verse, one single evidence about Islam, one single issue at a time. But we are, instead of spending much of our time to work for Allah, we are spending our time doing prayer, and which is good, and making dua, which is also good, but unfortunately, when Allah makes da'wah and invites us to turn our du'a into a reality, we say, no, you do it. Allah says, فَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةِ وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِاللَّهِ هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ We say, oh Allah, unite us. Well, he told you, you unite yourself. You work with each other. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى so we do the opposite and pray for the opposite of what we do. It cannot happen. Allah tells us, We say, no, you protect us and our children from hellfire. As if this is a substitute for the responsibility we have to carry. It is not. We abuse our faith when we make dua for something that we don't want to work for. It is like a student who keeps praying, Oh Allah, give me the best grade. Give me the best place in my class. Let me graduate, you know, come lad and all of that. But he doesn't study. He doesn't study. Is he going to make it? Of course not. And he knows it. So why are we settled that material gain is only by material work and the spiritual gain we want comes for free because our heads are not clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us something I want you our youth to remember it man doesn't get except what he or she earns and his working, his walking, his pursuit is going to be recorded for him or against him. It will be shown to Allah. And Somebody is driving hard, hard, day and night, and he's going to Florida. But when somebody calls him, where are you heading? He said, I'm going to New York. He's going south. He's going south. We Muslims claim that we are Muslims going towards Allah, but our work showing the opposite, our manners showing the opposite. The, the way we lead our children is more focused on material, worldly success than it is on a spiritual success to balance the material ownership of this world. Of course, Allah subjected everything in His creation to our utility. But we have to be wise. 
as he gave us material gains, he gave us the spirit, he gave us our souls. We have to take care of those. As you feed the body, you must feed the spirit. You must feed your soul. You must feed your heart by spiritual sources that are abundantly available. Today, information is running after us. It used to be in the past that one imam, like Imam al-Bukhari, would travel a month, a month or two to catch one hadith from a single source. And he may or may not find it valid or authentic to put in his collection. One month, either on a camel or mule or donkey or horse, whatever. Imagine a distance that you take in half an hour today, they used to do for one month each way. Rihlat al-Shita'i was saif, the trip of the summer and the winter. People used to take a long time. Now you're sitting at home under the care of the AC, your shower is available, your bed is available, and the information is pouring into your inbox. And instead of reading some of it, you are just ignoring it. This is religion. This is religion. I want to learn something different. So what made the first generation the greatest generation is they valued the revelation that Allah bestowed upon them and honored them with in the Quran and the Sunnah and Allah valued them. They became the generation that Allah SWT says about that he is pleased with them. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوكَ فِي سَاعَةِ الْعُسْرَةِ Allah has been pleased with them. Why? Because they followed the Prophet ﷺ. They did not shrink. They did not back down. They took responsibility for their own safety and security as a community as they took responsibility for reaching out with the da'wah of Islam to enlighten those who have lost the light of truth, to give people a chance at becoming spiritually balanced. Our world is plagued with materialism, with corruption, with mal allocation of resources, with abuse, racism, and all of the ism that plagued our world, all of this is waiting for you, our coming generation, to take the bull by the horn, to be strong. المؤمن القوي خير وأحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف. وفي كل خير. The strong believer is better and more beloved by Allah than a weak believer. A weak believer is a liability. A strong believer is the power that pulls our nation forward. Brothers and sisters, it is at your age, if you are a teenager or in your early 20, it is this group that the Prophet ﷺ relied on not only to change the future of the previous generation, but the future of humanity. One of them would go to one country or one town and he will change the whole town. Mus'ab ibn Umayr was a young man, very wealthy, very, very wealthy. And he came to the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca and he told him, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, what should I do? I want to become a Muslim. And he comes in dressed in silk, very lavish materials. The horse is highly decorated, very expensive, highly trained. And the Prophet ﷺ looks at this young man and he said, إِذَنْ يَضِيعُ مَالُكْ وَيُعْقَرُ فَرَسُكْ Your money will be lost. And your horse will be knocked down. Are you ready? Are you ready to sacrifice? People will treat you as their enemy while you are their most beloved loving person. They did this to all the prophets. Isa, Jesus, Muhammad, Moses. Everybody 
suffered from the same syndrome, rejection, false accusation, false alleg alleg allegations, but they stood tall because their mission was God divine sent mission. It is not for self-promotion. It is not to occupy somebody else's land. It is not to coerce somebody else to accept Islam. Far from it. Let there be no compulsion in religion. But it is about giving people a chance to learn the truth and make a free choice. This is our mission and your mission. When you make the pledge of Islam by saying La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, you have already signed to dedicate your life to Allah. Then ask yourself, do you do everything that pleases Allah when offered an opportunity? Are your choices based on what pleases Allah or what gives you fun, pleasure, and joy? You have to make up your mind. You have to choose. And this doesn't mean that I either live for the hereafter or and lose everything in this life or that I focus on this life and forget the hereafter. This life is the only bridge that will take you to a better place in the hereafter. You cannot cross until you pass over this bridge. So you have to make it the best. Then use whatever Allah gives you in this life to build the credit and a good place for you in the hereafter. This is how we become Ummatan Wasata, a nation of balance and moderation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to understand our mission and to carry it to Allah faithfully and sincerely. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhin astafa wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu wa ba'd Young brothers and sisters you need to understand that it doesn't take the majority to change a society it always takes one person to pull the society where it needs to go. It took Moses, one person, in a society that is full of the majority of adversaries. But Allah helped him and he prevailed to save his people despite their rebellion against Allah and against their prophet. Jesus السلام, faced a similar situation. He himself was afraid to speak frankly. And the Bible tells us that he only spoke in parables. Parables means that you speak through examples, that you speak in metaphors, so that you can always have an exit. Why? Because they, the, his enemies, wanted to kill him. And he says this in the Bible. He says, they want to do to me whatever they have done to John the Baptist which is to kill him. So he only spoke in parable. This is how much fear he had. But he never relented. He never gave in. He never gave up his mission. He never twist his mission to make it other than what it is. Why? Because he had resolved from the beginning that I am going to live until I die delivering the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It took a group of people to build this country, the founding fathers as they are called, right? Each one of them has his own vision, but together they formulated a civilization that everybody in the world is looking up to. We need you, our youth, to redirect this civilization into a spiritual direction so that we can reclaim God as our guide, so that we can reclaim the values that we learn from the Torah, from the Injil, from the Quran into reality. 
these three uh, communities do not contradict each other when it comes to values. Like Muslims, some Christians, some Jews have diverted from their religion. But we need to help everybody get back to Allah. A nation could never survive no matter how eloquent and articulate and emphatic their civilization may be unless they go back to Allah. We have kicked Allah out of every place in the public arena until now. Barely you could talk truthfully about Allah in a masjid, in a synagogue, in a church. Why? Because the majority will stand against you. The question is, are you ready? Are we the adults ready to empower our children to take this into a movement a movement that looks far beyond the material realm that could be seen by the eyes heard by the ears and touched by the hand this world of the spirit is why we were created we were not created to turn back into dust as if we had never existed we were created to build من الأرض واستعمركم فيها فاستغفروه ثم توبوا إليه Allah is the one who created us from the earth we are the product of the material of the earth the dust and the mud then the spirit turned the dust and the mud into a very very fantastic creature called man or the human we need to prove that we are better than the materials we are made of. And that's up to you, our next generation. But it is also on us, adults and parents, men and women of faith, to lead our children in the right direction. Please do not waste your children's time according to their wishes. Otherwise, you are betraying your responsibility. Many of us are afraid to say no no matter how awful a child is asking for, we are afraid to say no, lest they will do this or not do that. And we are minimizing for them what they need to do. Just read one ayah a day. May Allah help you. Just to pray one time a day. Maybe Allah will guide you. The minimum requirement and the minimum expectations raise a minimized generation. We need a generation of men and women who will build a Muslim family, a Muslim community, a Muslim society, and a Muslim nation that will benefit from their contribution, their achievements. We need your creativity. Do not copy our means, but copy the book that we all try to follow. Do not copy our example. Copy the examples of the Prophet wasallam. That's the only one we all must follow because we are certain where he is heading. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt. Wa aafina fi man aafayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Wa qina wa asrif anna sharra ma qadayt. Allahumma aqsib lana min khashiyatika ma tahulu bi baynana wa bayna maasiyatik. Wa min taatika ma tubalighuna bihi jannatak. ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا اللهم بارك لنا في ذرياتنا اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا اللهم اختم لنا بخاتمة السعادة أجمعين مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله 
إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاة